Hello and welcome to another Passport Provocation. My name's Alistair Dickens. I'm a history teacher at the State Comprehensive School in Manchester in the United Kingdom. And my provocation today is based around this race. Do our students know what it is? Do we? Does it matter? Now, my starting point for today is this question. Given that tackling racism has become such an important aspect of our thinking as history teachers about the curriculum. Why don't we explicitly teach what race is? Now, this issue arose from discussions in our faculty quite recently. Several of us were taking part in a school-wide working group on anti-racist teaching. And participants in that working group from our faculty quickly came to the conclusion that we had no clear understanding of what race conceptually meant. And as a result, we were fundamentally limited in how far we could tackle the issues of racism that we wanted to. Now, when I'm talking about race here, what I mean is race as a substantive concept. That is, a concept occurring throughout different periods of history, underpinning understanding and analysis of historical events and developments. Over the last few decades, there's been growing interest in gathering and instructing students explicitly in substantive concepts. Two foundational articles published in the Teaching History Journal by Heinen, Schrinemachers and Stufkins, Dutch teacher trainers, argued very, very clearly that students should have substantive concepts explicitly unpacked and taught in order to access the curriculum, to develop an understanding of historical topics and crucially to enable them to critically engage with the wider world that they encountered. Now substantive concepts underpin a lot of our thinking about history in Britain. So for example the national curriculum in England for history at the key stage three level explicitly names a number of concepts while hinting at some others such as empire, civilization, parliament, peasantry, now, incidentally, race and its obvious corollary racism is absent here. A more detailed attempt to um, collate substantive concepts was coordinated by Michael Fordham in 2017. And this list that Fordham and his colleagues put together for Key Stage 3 does include the concept of racism. There are also a number of other concepts which we could consider connected to or underpinned by racism, such as colonialism, fascism, hierarchy, and imperialism. And yet, in both cases, the substantive concept of race seems conspicuous in its absence. Now, I think this is remarkable, given that race as a concept is, if you like, a raw ingredient in racism and associated concepts. And this really raises a number of key questions that I'd like to consider in this presentation. First of all, what is race? Secondly, why aren't teachers more open to teaching race as a substantive concept? Thirdly, why should race be taught as a substantive concept? And finally, where do we go from there? Now, when we're thinking about what race actually means, it's easy to assume that we and our students have a fairly good understanding already. If students discuss racism in the classroom, they may well talk about discrimination on the basis of skin colour, or religion, or nationality, or perhaps geographic origin, or even culture. Now, in fact, I would argue these are all indicators that students may have a lay understanding of the concept of race, which allows them to identify some of the most common manifestations of racism. However, I'd also argue that this doesn't mean they necessarily have the conceptual knowledge required to analyse the idea of race in any meaningful way. So this still leaves open the question, what is race? This is what I would suggest race is. Race, I would suggest, is a modern way of thinking about human differences, which emphasises the role played by inherited characteristics in defining different large populations. There's a lot going on there. Let me unpack that. So when I'm talking about race as a modern way of thinking about human differences, what I mean is that it's one way amongst many that people have thought about human beings as being different from one another. 
and it's one that emerged really in the modern world, in particular from the 1400s onwards. When I'm talking about inherited characteristics, what I really mean is characteristics which are passed down through common ancestry, a key aspect of racial thinking. And when I'm talking about these characteristics as defining different large populations, what I mean is that they're considered in racial thinking to define large groups of people as distinct or different in a meaningful way. That means more than just skin deep. So for example, different groups of people in the past have argued, and indeed in the present, that race can account for different character um, of large population groups, for perhaps the different um, uh, culture of large population groups, or even different levels of intelligence amongst large population groups. All crucially, much, much more significant and meaningful than skin deep analysis. Now, evidently, this is rather different from what I suggested was our and perhaps students' lay understanding of race. Race is not simply a matter of skin colour, although clearly skin colour is an aspect of racial thinking which we need to take seriously. Race is not simply reducible to nation, religion and culture, although clearly all of these do intersect with common racial ideas. On the other hand, we can say that race is historically and socially constructed. Now, what that means is that race has been invented by people in particular periods of history for particular purposes. And that's crucial. And I'll come back to it in a moment. We can say that race is scientifically and intellectually suspect. And what I mean by that is it doesn't adequately describe or explain any objective reality. And in fact, intellectuals uh, and scientists have widely and quite rightly, if not universally, rejected the idea of race as a meaningful framework for understanding human difference since the Second World War ended. On the other hand, this does not mean it's not still important in society. And I think we need to acknowledge that race is a social reality. Because of people defining themselves and others through the prism of, of race, race itself has shaped the way that society works. In other words, even if race doesn't describe real biological differences in human populations, it can still be used as a basis for establishing real social differences. And the obvious example of that is the manifestation of racism in society, which continues, of course, to today. Now, there's a neat distinction here that I want to draw, and I'm taking this from two scholars, Cooper and Brubaker, who just over 20 years ago wrote an incredibly influential article on the idea of identity. Now, Cooper and Brubaker argued that there was a distinction between categories of analysis by which they meant valid scholarly ways of analysing the world, and categories of practice, by which they meant the sort of language and concepts that people use on an everyday level to describe and understand the world that they encounter. Now, I think in this connection, we can say that race is a category of practice because it shaped our social reality. However, it is not necessarily a valid category of analysis. And I would argue, actually, that its analytical framework and its value as an analytical framework is really severely limited. So given all of this, let's come on to this key question. Why aren't we more open to teaching the idea of race as a substantive concept? There's a few possible reasons. So one is that we may assume that students already understand what race is. And I think we may do this. However, as I've said before, I don't think that students' lay understandings of race are adequate to allow them to appreciate and break down associated concepts which they come up with more frequently, for example, racism. I don't think students actually have an adequate understanding of race, even if that is what we might assume. A second issue is that race itself is conceptually slippery. There are a range of different academic interpretations today 
about what race actually means. And it may well be that given the complexity of this term, teachers simply lack the confidence to tackle them in the classroom. Now, the Running Me Trust report from June 2020, going back nearly a year now, argued that teachers lacked a sense of confidence and racial literacy in teaching issues around race and racism in the classroom. And I think that may well be an issue here. Thirdly, quite straightforwardly, race is controversial. One of my colleagues, when I suggested the idea of teaching race as a substantive concept in history, said that it was a high risk and low reward uh, approach. And it may well be that teachers uh, do shy away from teaching some uncomfortable topics if we feel that they're not crucially necessary for what we're teaching. Although I think in this case, that would probably be a mistake. And finally, it could be that we simply think that race as a concept lacks scientific and analytical validity, which I think is true. However, I don't think that that means we shouldn't teach it. Now, the reason for that is actually um, quite uh, complex, but I want to break it down. I'll go through them one by one, these different ideas, these different reasons. First of all, I think the concept of race itself underpins the history of modern Europe in really fundamental ways, which cannot be understood without understanding the concept of race itself. Now, again, the Running Mead Trust report from last year argued that any anti-racist curriculum should involve showing how the history of modernity is shaped by racism, coloniality and white supremacy. And added to this, I think we can say that uh, it's necessary to show how these concepts themselves are underpinned by constantly changing ideas of race over time. Now, there are obvious manifestations of race in modern European history, one being Atlantic slavery and another being the way that the British thought of themselves as inherently superior to other groups of people around the world as they were building and consolidating their empire. But there are also less obvious manifestations, such as, for example, Victorian class society and the attendant fears of racial degeneration, which were a key factor in the development of the British welfare state. Now, I don't think that we can adequately understand these key developments without fully understanding and getting to grips with the idea of race. Now, secondly, I think that we need to explicitly teach race as a concept because students' intuitive understandings of race, especially those understandings which do not question the analytic, analytical validity of race, really limit students' ability to break down and challenge racial thinking. And that includes limiting their ability to challenge overt racism. Now, this brings me back to something that Hannah Cusworth argued in her presentation for the Curricularium series last year putting black in the Union Jack. She argued that when teaching about issues of diversity, it was necessary for teachers not to reinforce unconsciously common misconceptions and stereotypes about other peoples and cultures. And if that's the case, and I think she's absolutely right, then we need to challenge also the core belief, which is still common in society today, that the world can reasonably be divided into different races, however those races may be defined. At the same time, I think we need to be really clear about what race is. Race, I think, needs to be acknowledged, as the sociologist Peter Wade has argued very, very clearly, as only a social and perhaps also historical construction, not as any valid basis for analysing biological human differences. Now, the reality is I don't think we have automatically that understanding of race, and therefore we need to be instructing students in the idea of race as a substantive concept to allow them to understand that. So where do we go from here? Well, first of all, I think we need to clarify what do we understand by race and what do we want our students to understand by race? And crucially, how do we develop our own knowledge and understanding of race and how can we transmit that effectively to students? I think this also raises a wider question of what substantive concepts we want to teach. Race is one of them, but there are others which I think, as historians, we need to really get to grips with. 
concepts such as gender, such as nation, such as empire, all of which can be, I think, broken down probably in a more explicit way to enable students to really challenge the structures and the types of thought that they encounter on a day-to-day -day level. So I hope that has been of some interest. I'll be really, really keen for any responses. Thank you very, very much for uh, getting involved and for your attention.